Futures and options on futures trading involve substantial risk and is not a suitable investment for all types of investors. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. When I use the word I in this video, it refers to what I teach in my charting course or what I author in my twice daily oral and written updates. Prices shown on charts and quote boards are in real time and take into account all known activity up to this point in time. And if you'd like to read more of this disclaimer, simply hit the pause key on your video player. Good afternoon, all. Ira Epstein of Linen Associates with your weekend update of the agriculture markets using weekly charts for this Friday, April 21st, 2017, and it's about 1.30 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Well, as you can see, you got a mixed day. You have the wheat and the corn down on the day, not by very much, but down. The meal market popped back to the upside along with the soybean market. We're still facing lower energies. Cotton still closing strong, up another 22 points, up a slight amount in the sugar, nothing there that you can really talk about, and we'll cover the rest of the markets in short order. You're getting a bit of a comeback in the stock market, which was down earlier, until President Trump said he's going to release parts or maybe his tax plan, all of it next week. Interesting. There's horse trading going on. A week from today, Congress has to make a decision. Does the government shut down because of lack of funds? Do they fund it again then? Or do they give it a slight extension in time as everybody does more horse trading? Have you noticed? You don't hear from Nancy Pelosi or Chuck Schumer. The reasons you're not hearing from them, and you haven't, is there's the trading going on right now. And if they open up their mouths, they will shut that off very quickly turn people off. They've done the right thing. They're being quiet. Now let us see if we can get something positive out of Congress. Hard to tell, but if it's a tax break, it will certainly uh, be interesting to see what it says, what's the chance of getting done, and then there's the health care issue. But in terms of the grains, we saw the Stats Canada today. They're looking for increases in acreage pretty much across the board, especially in the soybean area. I saw that. If you take a look at this triangle pattern you've had in the soybeans, this is called a breakout pattern. You have broken out to the downside. Yes, you can get rallies back into it, but this is still going to be a line that you have to deal with. And can you get back up into the $10 mark? I'm not saying you can't, but it looks to me like it won't be an easy chore. The market still has in place a pattern of highs that have come down to lower and lows on closes, but we've had a little bounce, and if you can get back over this close right here, see that right now on a weekly basis, that would be 9.55 and a half here at 51. Well, you could argue that you get that spring low in place, and maybe you get a bit of a bounce going into the planting season. Hard to tell. The chart itself, this is basically how the market's been falling. Uh, it's straight down from the high to the low, and you've had a bounce in the market. When you take a look at the swing line study, you've got lower highs, lower lows. You'd have to take out 1008 and three quarters in order to negate the downtrend. When we take a look at resistance points, theoretical ones at least, you've now spent about four weeks or so under the 100-week moving average of closes. It, is not surprising to get that, and then you get a bit of a bounce. That bounce might carry back to wherever that 18-week moving average of closes comes in when the market reopens on Sunday, but it'll probably be under the $10 level. Remember, it's using this week's close now. As soon as it reopens on Sunday night, it'll take whatever the current price is and drop one of these prices back here that's the 18-week and use that number. It's lower, so it'll drop the average down. When we take a look at Bollinger Bands, you've been riding them. It's not uncommon to get a bounce away from them. First resistance to 69 and a half level, if it can reach up there. I'm not saying it has to. I'm saying that's the resistance point. And momentum is locked in into the bear camp. There's nothing friendly on that momentum at all. It's not even begun to turn itself up. So this market still on rallies doesn't look like it's turning the corner that way. Same in the meal. The meal market's fighting a battle on a weekly now between the 318 and let's call it the 18-week average at 324 and a half. The 318 is the 100-week average. Do you see the pattern of lower highs, lower lows? Very much in the bear camp. Yes, you can get these intraday bounces, but you'd really have to get over 331.30 to say you've neutralized the bear trend, and that's quite a ways from here. 
on the soybean oil, the market's a little different. This, as they unwound some of the crush spread, they took the meal down and kicked the oil up this week. And oil's back to the resistance at the 100-week moving average of closes, but it's got momentum still locked into a bear phase. 32.33 is probably a resist. I'm sorry, 33.33 is the resistance. That'll fall down a bit too this week. Just the same thing. You got a close here that's going to be dropped by one there to be replacing it, so it'll drop the average down. It's going to be well under that 33.94. So for longer term traders, rallies in soybean oil are still very much in play uh, for short sales. On the weekly chart in the corn. If you take a look at the break right now, 354 and a quarter was the low. It's a double bottom at this area right here. So you can still argue you've got higher lows, higher highs, but you're under the 100 week and 18 week average and momentum's pointing down. The longer term chart is still fighting a big battle and it's been doing that in sideways Bollinger Band action. You know, the daily charts swing much more than these weekly in terms of action and you can see a picture here that is still not very good one way or the other. The wheat is in trouble. It's that simple. It's gotten down to a magic number here towards the $4 level. Now in talking to our firm, anything under four farmers will probably start putting wheat into the loan program. And as they do that, volatility starts coming out of the market because they're going to get their money and they're not going to do very much until they have a better idea of what to do. That's the government program they're going to use. So lower highs, lower lows into a support level, but momentum still pointing down. Cocoa market still in big trouble here came down and it's been a hard market on the weekly chart because it's got a pattern of a higher high and a lower low. But that high back to this area of the 18 week average of closes completely failed and drove you back to the Bollinger Band. You know, you can stay on a Bollinger Band and ride it. And that could be what this market does is momentum is still pointing down in the chart. The sugar market's battleground is the 100 week moving average of closes, but it's in a bear trend. Momentum is still pointing down, lower highs, lower lows, just everything bearish on that chart. And if you looked at the daily chart of coffee, you got yourself maybe all confused. But at the moment you opened up the weekly, you had a different program. The weekly chart keeps failing at the 18 week moving average of closes. The pattern right now is a higher high and a lower low, right down into support at the lower Bollinger Band, and momentum is still pointing down. There is nothing friendly on this chart, and if you go back, you've got to go way back here a year ago to get prices back in June and July that were as low as they are right now. In the cotton market, it's the opposite. A lot of demand for U.S. cotton. The market's up to the upper Bollinger Band, a difficult trade. It had come down very hard and never did set up because it went straight on up in two weeks to the upper Bollinger Band. Didn't give people a real chance to get involved like they did in other areas on the chart. It was just whoopsie-doo and away you go. In the cattle market, still very much a bull market, not over to the upside. Is it ahead of itself? Yes. It's over its upper Bollinger Band. And whether a Bollinger Band is on a weekly chart or a daily chart, the theory is the same. It's getting ahead of itself. Don't be surprised if you get pullbacks in the next week or two. But momentum pointing up and the trend up, and you're even over the long-term 100-week moving average. And like the daily chart, generally when you get over this, it's not unusual to come back and test it a little bit. The hog market, bearish. Look at, you had what's called the kiss. The 18 and the 100 week averages kissed each other and are turning right back down. Now, the interesting thing for the week is hogs are going to close higher on this chart. If you were to take out this week's low of 61.87 and a half, then I would think that you'd have what's called a bull trap and the market looks for the lower Bollinger Band. As it is, resistance, it's showing itself the 18 and the 100 day average, and that's where I'd leave that. So, interesting week, real interesting one, and it's gonna be a real exciting Sunday night with the French elections, who's gonna win, is it gonna be uh, midstream parties, what's gonna happen, and of course, look at how the stock markets come off the low since the president has said tax plan, nobody expected that. He's even talking that he thinks, very shortly, they're gonna be able to get a healthcare deal. He knows something we don't know, 
And you know, you got to understand with that debt ceiling, he can do some horse trading here. Let's see how good he is at what he says he is. All right, let me talk to you about a free one-year subscription to Modern Trader Magazine. Fascinating. These are all the different articles, chart patterns, stock market. It discusses individual stocks, ETF plays, technical oscillators, if you want in this case, different trading patterns. It doesn't matter if you're a derivative trader, an FX trader, a futures market trader, a stock trader, an options trader. It's got stories galore, and it comes. Every day you're going to get market focus. How do you get this sent to you? And it's all by email. Give us a call, go to our website at www.irapstein.com and or click right up here if you're watching me on YouTube. The forms will appear, fill out what you'd want. We'll take it the rest of the way for you. And by the way, we do send this because it's email through the rest of the world. I'm Ira, you have a great day.